Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. So I've been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks and when I get online and talk to you guys about various subjects, it's either stuff that, you know, I'm not all that. I've either already gone through it, I've overcome it, I've experienced it, or I'm right in the middle of the journey. Well, I would say that on this one, I'm right in the middle of the journey. And, uh, and what we're talking about here is the Lord instructed us to uh, love the Lord your God, where Jesus instructed us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, love your, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, we're, um, a lot of us are experiencing a fail in that, and where is that disconnect? Well, it's in the love yourself part, because you'll, you'll notice it's three people there you're supposed to love. Your God, your neighbor, and yourself. Well, self tends to throw a wrench into it all the time. And not in just one area. There's a couple of areas where you're really getting tied up and tripping over your own shoes. And that is one, is you don't love yourself. So how can you love anyone else? And Satan is king of this. He's the father of lies. So he's in your head all the time and he's condemning you. Well, that's not what the spirit does. That's not what Jesus does. In fact, Romans uh, 8, 1 says, you are therefore under no condemnation for those of you who walk in the spirit. So if you have given your heart and your life to the Lord, you are under no condemnation. It also says in uh, 1 John 1, 9, if you come to him and ask forgiveness of your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins. And then in Psalms 103, he removes your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Your sins have been taken from you. When you come and repent to him, he is faithful and just to remove from you all of your sins. So you are no, you're no longer under condemnation. Satan is the one condemning you. So first and foremost, after the Lord has forgiven you what he has, then you have to forgive yourself because it's forgotten. He has forgotten it. He has taken it out of the books. So you, that's nothing that you no longer have to worry about. Remember, Satan lies in your head. Two, you don't necessarily value yourself or see the worth in you. Remember, God sent his only begotten son because he loved the world so much that he sent his son to die for you so that you can have eternal life. In fact, in Jeremiah it says, uh, before you were formed in the womb, he knew you. And I've talked about this before, but when you come to the Father, you are joint heirs with Christ. You are a royal priesthood. In Revelations 1, 5, and 6, it says you are kings. That is what you are considered when you are translated from Satan's kingdom into God's kingdom. When you give your heart to him and when you believe on him, you are valued. You are now a kingdom child. So you know your worth. You know you're valued. So these are things that when you understand that, it no longer gets in your way. So it's very important to understand that you're forgiven and that you're valued. Number two thing that gets in your way is me, myself, and I. So when, uh, and I have gotten, this is, I've struggled with this a lot just recently and, and realized, uh, you know, it's a big problem. When, when people reject you, when you get in offense, when, um, you know, you're, you're more focused on yourself than you are on others. And, and don't get me wrong, people, people are going to reject you. People are going to offend you. But if when, when you know that that's a, a direct attack from Satan, you can not be bothered by that anymore. You can realize and, and you can rebuff it and you can tell Satan to go jump off a cliff. You can, you can do that. And um, I do it all the time. Buzz off, dude. So feel free. And then, so what I'm doing now is, because this is where I've been struggling lately, 
So in 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 13, 4 through 8, and I'm going to read this. And I plan on doing this, just a little challenge that I'm doing for myself through the end of September. Um, and maybe I'll do it uh, even farther than that, because I'm sure it's going to be very effective. But 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, it is the love chapter. And it says what love is. Well, I have replaced the word love with patria, or I. So you can try it yourself and, and see. Uh, it, pretty much it's a mirror in front of your face. But um, patria suffers long and is kind. Patria does not envy. Big fail. <laughs> patria does not parade herself and she's not puffed up. Patria does not behave rudely. Patria does not seek her own and is not easily provoked. Fail. Thing, Patria thinks no evil. Fail. Patria does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Patria bears all things. Patria believes all things. Patria hopes all things. And Patria endures all things. Love never fails. So if you put the, you know, fail, if you put this mirror in front of your face every day, um, which is what I have been doing for the last few days and can, will continue to do, like I said, until the end of September, uh, I think it might, I know it's going to help me and um, maybe it'll help you as well. So you might try doing that every day through the end of September if you'd like to join that little challenge, the self-challenge I gave myself. I think it'll make a big difference. Remember, you are forgiven, you are valued, you are loved, you are worthy, and when you can uh, love others, take yourself out of the picture, which is the hardest thing in the world to do, but take yourself out of the picture, turn it around, and focus not on yourself, but focus on others, it will just turn your life upside down. And I'm on that journey with you. So I hope you guys will have a great Tuesday, and I'll see you next time.